Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the trapezoidal rule. And the trapezoidal rule is another way that we can approximate the area under a function or under a curve. Right, so previously when we approximated this area, we used rectangles, whether that be rectangles with right endpoints or left endpoints or we used midpoints, and that was the only shape we ever used to approximate that area. But what if we were to use a different shape, such as a trapezoid? And the reason that you would maybe want to use trapezoids is that you would be able to more closely match the shape of your function or the curve that you were trying to find the area underneath. And so let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we wanted to use three trapezoids to approximate the area of this region underneath our function. Our three trapezoids would look something like this. We'd have one right here, and then another one right here, and then a third one right here. If we were to calculate the area of each of these trapezoids and add them together, we would get a pretty good approximation of this region here underneath this function. And it would be a better approximation than what we found when we used rectangles with left or right endpoints. And the reason for that is look at how similar the shape of the function is to the shape that is created by these three trapezoids. Notice that with each trapezoid, the slope or the line that is connecting the two edges is not the same for each trapezoid. It changes based on the function. Right, because the top part of each side of each trapezoid is meeting up with the function. That is the idea. When you draw your trapezoids, each side is going to touch the function. And so that's why these trapezoids are going to give us a better approximation of this area than rectangles would because these more closely fit the shape of the region that we are actually trying to calculate the area of. And so in order to figure out what this approximation would be or the area of these trapezoids, we need to know how to find the area of a trapezoid. And so if we look at this first trapezoid here, and I'll draw a version of it down here for us to look at, in order to calculate the area of this trapezoid or any trapezoid, we need three different things. We need to know the width of this trapezoid and we need to know the length of its bases A and B because the area of the trapezoid is equal to that width times those two bases added together, A plus B, divided by two. And so how are we going to find these three values for each of our trapezoids? Well, when we use the trapezoidal rule, we're going to be using trapezoids with equal widths. And so this is going to be very similar to how we calculated the width for rectangles in Riemann sums. We said that the width was delta x and that that was equal to b minus a divided by n, where b and a corresponded to your interval, your lower bound and your upper bound. In this case, it would be x sub 0 and x sub 3. And n was the number of rectangles we were using. And so this will be the same in this scenario, except n is going to represent the number of trapezoids we are using. And so this will be the width of our trapezoids. And so, so far we have that this is equal to delta x times and then let's figure out what A and B would be equal to for this scenario as well. And so if we look at this trapezoid right here on our graph, what would this height be and this height be? Well, it's going to be very similar to how we found the height of our rectangles for Riemann sums, except this time we have to do it for two different sides because each side of a trapezoid or each base has a different height. And so if we look at our trapezoids here, remember what I said earlier that each of these corners or each of the top of these sides meets up with the function. And so if we want to figure out the height of each of these sides, we just have to plug those values of x that line up with our sides into the function to get the y value of those points. And that would give us the height. And so for this trapezoid right here, our first trapezoid, those two heights would be f of x sub zero and f of x sub one, right? These are the x values that line up with the bases or the sides of this trapezoid. And so now we have our values of a and b, which we can then plug into this formula and have delta x times f of x sub zero plus f of x sub one. And then that would still be divided by two. And so this right here is the area of this first trapezoid here. And so if we clean up our work, we can also find the area of our other two trapezoids. And so it's going to be very similar. We'll have plus delta x times, and then we will add the two bases together and divide by two. And so in this case, the two bases will be f of x sub one, right? That is this side, and then f of x sub two, which would be this side. And so we'd have f of x sub one plus f of x sub two. And so then for our third and final trapezoid, we would have plus 
delta x times, and then our two sides would be f of x sub two and f of x sub three, right? Those would line up with those two sides. And so we'd have f of x sub two plus f of x sub three, and then divided by two. And so then this area right here would represent the approximate area under this function using these three trapezoids. And so if we knew our values of x sub zero, x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three, we could go ahead and plug those values in and calculate that area. However, this is not in its simplest form. We can make this a lot easier to calculate, specifically in the general case where we are looking at an n number of trapezoids rather than a specific number of trapezoids. Right, so if I remove our calculation for the third trapezoid here, and we were to continue this up until our nth term, or the area of our last trapezoid, or our nth trapezoid, would be delta x times f of x sub n minus one plus f of x sub n, and that would be divided by two. Right, so in this case here, where n was equal to three, our last value of x was x sub three, and so that matches up with this term right here, where we'd have f of x sub two plus f of x sub three as part of our last calculation. But then what we can do is manipulate this formula a little bit, or this equation, to be a little bit nicer by noticing that each term has a common factor of delta x divided by two. And so if we clean up our work here and pull those factors out of each term, we will have that the area is equal to delta x divided by two times f of x sub zero plus f of x sub one, right? If we pulled delta x divided by two out of this first term, we'd just be left with these two terms added together. And then we'll do the same for this term. We're just going to be left with these two terms. So we'll have plus f of x sub one plus f of x sub two. And then we continue to our last term and we just have these two terms left. And so we'd have f of x sub n minus one plus f of x sub n. And so now this results in something interesting. Notice that we have two values here of f of x sub one. Why is that? Why do we have two of these here? Well, if you look at our graph here, when we're calculating the area of each of these trapezoids, except for the first trapezoid and the last trapezoid, all the trapezoids in between, we're gonna be calculating the height of the sides twice, right? Because this trapezoid shares that height with this trapezoid, and this trapezoid shares this height with this trapezoid. And if we had more trapezoids, let's say we had a fourth one here, this trapezoid would share that side with that next trapezoid. And so we would be calculating the height there two times as opposed to calculating it only one time. And so because of that, we can simplify this formula a little bit more and we'll find that this is equal to delta x divided by two times f of x sub zero. That's going to be that first height that's only calculated once, but then we're going to have plus two times f of x sub one, right? We're just adding these together or you can think of it as we are calculating this height two times and then we're going to add two times f of x sub two and then we would continue to add up until we get to two times f of x sub n minus one, and then we would just have one of f of x sub n, right? Because that would be the last side of our last trapezoid that isn't shared with any other trapezoids. And so what we just found, this formula right here is the trapezoidal rule. If we wanna approximate the area under a function using an n number of trapezoids, you can use this formula. And so notice that the coefficients of these terms is one, two, two, and then two, and then one on the last one. So we have this pattern of one, two, 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 and then the twos continue until the last term where you have one. And so keep this in mind as we look at our example here of using this formula. Let's look at that next. All right, so here's our example. We want to approximate the integral from zero to eight of 64 minus x squared dx using the trapezoidal rule for n equals four, right? So this integral right here represents the area under this function, 64 minus x squared from zero to eight. And instead of solving this integral as usual, we are going to approximate that area under that function using trapezoids, specifically four trapezoids. And so if we use the trapezoidal rule here, we know that the area is going to be equal to delta x divided by two times f of x sub zero plus two times f of x sub one plus two times f of x sub two plus two times f of x sub three plus f of x sub 
4, right? So if we're using four trapezoids, n equals 4, then that means our last value of x sub n is going to be x sub 4. And so if we follow that pattern of the coefficients that I just mentioned previously, our first value of x sub 0 evaluated on the function is multiplied by 1, and then all the other ones are multiplied by 2 except for the last term of our last value of x sub n. And so in order to figure out what these values of x are, we're first going to need to calculate delta x, or the width of our rectangles. And so we know that delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. And in this case, b and a are going to correspond to our bounds of integration, right? We're finding the area from x equals 0 to x equals 8. And so this would be our value of a, so a is equal to 0, and this would be our value of b, so b is equal to 8. And so this is equal to 8 minus 0 divided by n, which we are told is 4, right? We're using four trapezoids, so we'll divide by 4, and that will be equal to 8 divided by 4, which is equal to 2. And so we can plug that in real quick. We'll have that the area is equal to 2 divided by 2, because delta x is equal to 2. This will just reduce the 1, but we'll get to that in a little bit. This is going to be multiplied by f of x sub 0. And x sub 0 is going to be your lower bound, which in this case is 0. So we're going to have f of 0 plus 2 times f of x sub 1, which is going to be your lower bound plus delta x. And so we're going to add 2 to this value. And so 0 plus 2 is 2. And so that will be our next value. And then we're going to add that to 2 times f of x sub 2, which to get x sub 2, we're going to add delta x to our previous value of x sub 1. So we add 2 to 2, and we will get 4. And then we're going to add 2 times f of x sub 3. And x sub 3 is going to be another delta x added to our previous value. So we'll add 2 to 4, and we will have 6. And then we will add f of x sub 4, our last term, and x sub 4 is going to be your upper bound, or you could just add delta x again to your value of x sub 3. Either way, you're going to get 8 because 6 plus 2 is 8. And so you're going to have f of 8, right? And so now we have our formula for the area all set up. All we have to do now is plug each of our values of x into our function, which in this case is going to be 64 minus x squared. In fact, I'll even write that here. This is f of x. This is our function that we're going to be plugging each of these values into. And so we'll have that this is equal to 1 times f of 0. 64 minus 0 squared is just 64 minus 0. So we have 64. Then we're going to add 2 times 2 plugged into our function. And 2 plugged into x will be 2 squared. So 64 minus 4 will be 60. So we'll have 60. And then we will add 2 times f of 4. So we're going to be plugging 4 into our function. And so 64 minus 4 squared will be 64 minus 16, and that is equal to 48. And then we will add 2 times 6 plugged into our function. So we're going to have 64 minus 6 squared, and so that's 64 minus 36, and so that is equal to 28. And then we will add that to plugging 8 into our function, and 64 minus 8 squared is 64 minus 64, which is 0. All right, so then if we clean up our work here, this will be equal to 64 plus 120, right? 2 times 60 is 120, plus 2 times 48, which is 96, plus 2 times 28, which is 56, and then plus 0. And I'm not going to bother to write that. But then if we add all these values together, this will be equal to 336, which is our approximate area under this function using the trapezoidal rule with four trapezoids. And so then just so you can see how close this approximation is to the actual area under this function from 0 to 8, let's go through and evaluate this definite integral to end this lesson. All right, so here we have the definite integral from 0 to 8 of 64 minus x squared dx, and we have our approximation using the trapezoidal rule that the area is equal to 336. So let's compare that to the actual area. If we solve this definite integral, this will be equal to 64x minus x to the third power divided by 3 evaluated from 0 to 8, right? So we just integrated each of these terms. When you integrate a constant, you multiply it by x or whatever variable you are integrating with respect to. And then the integral of negative x squared, we use the power rule for integration by adding 1 to the exponent and then dividing by that new exponent. So we have x cubed divided by 3. 
And so then if we evaluate this at eight and then subtract the evaluation at zero, we'll have that this is equal to 64 times eight minus eight to the third power divided by three. And then we will subtract 64 times zero minus zero cubed divided by three. And notice that this term would just be equal to zero, right? 64 times zero is zero and zero cubed divided by three is zero. And so we don't need to worry about this term. But if we were to go over here, 64 times eight is equal to 512. And then we'll be subtracting eight cubed, which is also 512. And that will be divided by three. And so if we were to represent 512 as a fraction of thirds, this would be equal to 1,536 divided by three. That would still be 512. And we're subtracting 512 thirds, which would be equal to 1,024 thirds, which is equal to 341.3 repeating. And so this is the actual area under 64 minus x squared from zero to eight, which as you can see, our approximation was pretty close to that value. It's off by about five or so. And so you can see that the trapezoidal rule is pretty good at getting a close approximation of the area under a function. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more example problems of using the trapezoidal rule to approximate the area underneath a function, you can check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.